Oh, hello, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to take a look at one of my military surplus rifle collection. Now, this one is the Lee Enfield number no. 4 Mark II. The uh, Enfield line of rifle has seen actions in pretty much every single war back in the 20th century by many forces. You know, the British and Commonwealth soldiers, you know, throughout both world wars and the guerrillas in the jungles of Africa, Israelis and Arabs on the battlefields in the Middle East, and the Mujahideens, you know, in the war against, you know, the Soviets and even Americans. So uh, throughout its entire production history, it has so many variances. Um, the, the rifle that other people have might be different than the one that you have or I have depending on when it was produced, what model it is, and also who produced it. You know, even like, you know, I think uh, Savage in the, in the US and also Canadian company has made Enfield rifles in different times during the war uh, to increase productions. So I just want to kind of go through my particular rifle, kind of give you a little walkthrough on the characters and the features that it has. Uh, I'm sure you know, you come to this video, you probably have, you know, know something about the Enfield rifle or you want to know more. Um, I don't have all the knowledge, but I just kind of go through what I know about my rifle. So let's take a look at um, the action first and then make sure the gun is unloaded and nothing in the chamber. And we're going to put it on the vise so we can sort of kind of go over the entire rifle really quick. And then we're going to take it to the range and up to the mountain and do some shooting with it. So let's get started. So let's move from the beginning to end throughout the entire rifle, giving an idea what condition that this rifle is in. Uh, the wood stock is in pretty good shape. It's got like dings and dents, but it's not too bad. Uh, the action, the receiver, the magazines, they are in very good condition actually. And the uh, the barrel is very really shiny and the bore and the, the grooves and the rifling is also in very good condition. Here's from the rear end, the uh, golden butts of the Lian field. Uh, the back plate is made out of brass, but it has that kind of goldish color to it. Very classic and, and very classy. Here the serial number will tell you, it's number 4 Mark 2 F and I believe the production year is 1953 and then you have the rest of the serial number. Um, everything is all matching, uh, the numbers on the receiver matches with the numbers on the barrel as well as the number on the magazine which is on the bottom part of the magazine and also the bolt. If you can look at the back side of the bolt that's where you find the serial number. So this rifle has two um, aperture sights. One is the bigger non-adjustable fixed ghost ring sight for quick target acquisition. And then you have a ladder sight has much smaller aperture holes and then a radio turn knob that will get you uh, elevation adjustments up to all the way to about 1300 yards. The radio turn ups is very precise and also has really clear clicking sound, allow you to kind of really kind of get a really accurate reading and adjustment clicks. And then you, there, the markings on the ladder is still very visible. And some of the, the ladder side that you see on, I think, um, some of the Mark 1 rifles uh, that will feature not the radio turn up, but um, sort of a detent notch for you to raise and lower the apertures. And some of the wartime Mark 1 rifle will only have the, the bigger fixed battle sights and, and not the, the, the raise ladder size is for probably for the reason of you know ease productions 
for simpler, simplify production lines and, you know, produce more rifle to the battlefield. And then also some of the Mark I rifle during the wartime, you will see uh, the rifling of the barrels has only three grooves instead of five. So I'm pretty happy with the, my Mark II rifle. It has pretty much everything that a, a proper uh, Enfield uh, number four Mark II should have. And everything is built really high quality, even though you see things that are kind of, uh, you know, a little older, but everything's functional, it's very smooth, and has that kind of classic metal look to it. Now, um, the Lee Enfield's bolt, uh, now that is like the best part of this rifle, right? The action. Now the action of the Enfield rifle is what makes this rifle so special and unique. The design, uh, the bolt design has a cock on close design instead of uh, what you see in the motion actions uh, or like the motion actions where the bolt uh, cocks on open. So you see here, uh, you push thin to spring low the bolt and on closing. So that means when you fire the shot, it doesn't really take much effort to reopen the bolt because you're not cocking the bolt at that moment. It only you cock the bolt when you close the action. But see, the thing is, when you close the action, you have that kind of inertia momentum. When you close the bolt and you have that momentum help you kind of to load the spring in the uh, bolt. So that kind of makes the, uh, the action so fast and easy to operate. The British soldier uh, could fire, say, in a rate of 25 to 30 rounds per minute what they call a mad minute and some people even can do it a lot faster than that so it's really you know easy and smooth to operate and uh, that's what makes give this um, rifle such a special characteristic allowing soldiers can really lay down a high volume of firepower upon enemy positions um, with you know just a bolt operating rifle the, uh, the magazine holds 10 rounds, and it's a really small magazine. It holds 10 rounds because it has double stack uh, design, which is pretty advanced for that time. Now to, to remove the bolt for this particular model, there are different, there, I think the Mark 1 has a different way of removing the bolt. But for this one, you see this, uh, this one, this rotating lug, it actually rides in a track, it has a groove. It rides on the track within the uh, within the receiver, the right side of the receiver, and uh, and then it comes to this little button right here. And then this button actually is part of that track. So in order for this rotating knob, I mean lug, to be free from that track, before it hits this gate right here, you kind of press down that little button and then to allow the lug to ride above that track and then we'll be able to rotate the lug upward and you open up the sight so that it will, the bolt will come out. So the bolt has two lug design and also what sets this bolt different than like the Mauser action is that the Mauser will have lugs in the front, uh, inside, just right behind the chamber. But here the Enfield's lug uh, locks in the rear right here this part and also there is a a cut out inside so that's where the two lugs will lock so to put it back in keep the uh, the rotating lug straight up get it back in here and then same thing before it hits this um, little button you press down the button and then allow the rotating bow to get on top of that button and set it down flat and then it will clear that button and then get it back into the main action. So uh, very smooth, very cool action, love it. And um, just the overall design of the action is what really kind of prompted me to want to get an end view, you know, first time when I learned about this particular rifle. 
Okay, so let's look at the uh, trigger and the safety. The safety is located on the left side of the rifle, in the back of the action. And when you see here, when you look at the bolt, it has this two slots right here. One slot and second slot. So what it does is that it allows the, the first slot, it allows the, the safe, the safe lever to engage the safety when a gun, when the bolt is cocked. So you, you can have a cock and safe, or you can have, and then at this point, you cannot operate the bolt. And then, or you can have a, a uh, you know, uncocked position, and then you still can engage the safety when the gun is uncocked. And then at this point, you still will not be able to operate the bolt to low or chamber around. So there are two uh, options where it's kind of, you know, it shows that they really put in thoughts into the safety mechanism when they design the rifle, which is really cool. Um, and the trigger, let's put it on back on fire and let's cock the rifle. And the trigger is, um, it's all right. It has that kind of freeze travel right there. And then it breaks. It's probably maybe seven or eight pounds, but it breaks clean. It's a very typical sort of the surplus uh, World War II uh, rifle feel. You know, it's heavy, but um, it's very actionable. So it's pretty good. So let's look at the front side and the muscle of the rifle. Now the, the front side, here is where you do the, the windage adjustment. Um, the front side uh, do uh, drift left and right for windage. So the rear side is for uh, elevations. So to do windage adjustment, you have to use a screwdriver to loosen up the screw here to, so that the, the protected shrouds for the sides can slide out of the barrel a little bit and then free up the where you can use a just the regular front side drift tool and you can drift the front side left to right and uh, so this one is what i use for ak and sks and it will work for the end fuel as well so it's very really convenient so right now i have the the windage pretty much all um set to um line up all the way to 200 yards and it actually works really well and uh, the barrel, you can see the barrel has a lot of wearing. It's mainly from um, the uh, bayonet mounting and dismounting. So you have a two lug on the right and left, one little shorter, one longer. Um, so the, there's a bayonet that came with the rifle that will have um, a, a kind of spring tension within the, uh, the locking lug of the bayonet to allow it to lock onto the barrel lug um, for mounting and dismounting. So one last thing to mention is that the, uh, the 10 round magazine is detachable, but uh, soldiers, they don't really use the detachable magazine to load and unload cartridges. The removal magazine uh, basically is removed for field stripping or cleaning. Uh, majority of the time is top loaded using either a five rounds uh, magazine clip or just kind of hand feed it one at a time. Now the, the uh, bolt, the extraction claw, the bolt actually will have a, what they call a uh, control feed. And uh, so basically when the bolt pushes the round out of the magazine, it will actually already uh, claim onto the rim of the, the cartridges and as it's pushing into the chamber. So it's a control feed. So to unload the rifle with the full magazine, uh, you don't need to push the round all the way in and close the bolt to have the extractor to cling onto the rim of the cartridge. So it's a, a lot safer method to remove and unload the rifle of its cartridges using the control feed uh, mechanism. You can push it up f halfway and then 
extract, half plate and extract. So I really like that feature. Uh, so without, you know, having to worry about, you know, having to, to close the bolt entirely to get the cartridges to extract. The ammo that we're going to be using today is this made in England 303 surplus ammo. Uh, it came in 32 rounds package. Uh, it's interesting how it's 32, not 20, 40, or 50. It's 32. So the British, they have their own way. Uh, good old 303 rim cartridge, 174 grain ball ammo. Uh, so these guys are really accurate. Um, I can shoot pretty good groups from it, but a few of them that did have uh, experience uh, primer delayed, uh, where I will pull the trigger and then I can hear the firing pin hit the primer, and then a split second later the gun will fire. So um, hopefully I won't I won't get that in this video. But if it does, I will let you know. And also there are a few rounds that I have fired in the past will require a second strike where I pull the trigger, nothing happens. So I wait 10, 15 seconds, make sure there's no hang fire. Then I will um, cock the bolt again. And the second time firing it, it will go off. So, uh, so there is some, you know, uh, primer issues with, you know, the aging of the ammo. So it's not really the problem with the rifle or the the firing pin. Uh, it just, I think, uh, just uh, the way the ammo is, being that they are more than fifty or half a century old. So yeah, so let's take it to the range and um, put it through its pace. Uh, put up some paper targets and see what kind of group we're gonna get. Okay, to 100 yard surplus ammo. All go high, but wind pitch is okay. We we'll get about about six, six and a half inch, six inch groups. Not bad. So we're gonna load up a few rounds and we'll see how it goes. I don't have any uh, stripper clips, so we're going to hand load one at a time. I'm going to load five rounds. All right, five rounds, man.
definitely really good shooter. The boat is extremely fast to operate. It doesn't take much effort to, to cycle the boat. Not like those like Mosi, Nagan, whatever. It, it's just, it's just one little finger. You can operate the boat like that. You can keep it on your shoulder, firing precision, no problem. So this is the characteristic of the Lee Enfield. Number four, Mark II. All right, folks, that's all I have for today. Uh, I need to get ready for dinner. It's getting dark and then I will clean this rifle. So until next time, I'll see you later.